Hi, Antrim and Newton Abbey Borough Council recognise and appreciate that businesses are currently facing unprecedented challenges as a result of the significant economic impact that COVID-19 is having across businesses and homes throughout the borough, as well as the rest of Northern Ireland. And in order to support the local economy, the Council is continuing its business activities and engaging with key partners to explore how best to support local companies over the forthcoming period, and they are providing as much information as possible via the Council website. As part of that support, they are providing this webinar and others like it to support local businesses through this crisis. They also have one-to-one -one business mentoring support available through the Optimal Programme. And if you need business advice, please text, text business to 80039 or email business at antrim at newtonabbey.gov.uk. The information in this presentation has been gathered from a range of sources. The Health and Safety Executive of Northern Ireland, NI Direct, the PHA, NI Business Info, and is aimed at all small business owners in the local council area. The topics we're going to cover today are your legal obligations to keep yourself and your employees and your customers safe, Best ways to get your premises ready, ensuring your staff safety, ensuring your customer safety and ongoing protocols and procedures for maintaining a safe working environment and a safe training environment. Each business will need to translate what we cover today into the specific actions that are needed, depending on the nature of their business. The sector they operate in, including the size and type of business, how it's organised, your number of staff, your potential number of customers you would have at any given time, and generally how your business is operated, managed and regulated. Under the Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999, the very minimum you must do is identify what can cause injury or illness in your business, i.e. identify the hazards, decide how likely it is that someone could be harmed and how seriously, identify the risk, Take action to eliminate the hazard, and if this isn't possible, how to control the risk. And assess the risk is just one part of the overall process used to control your workplace. Employers must carry out a COVID-19 risk assessment. This assessment must be done in consultation with unions or employees and any findings shared with the workforce. A risk assessment is not about creating huge amount of paperwork, but rather about identifying sensible measures to control risks in your workplace. If you have fewer than five employees or are self-employed, you don't have to write anything down as part of your risk assessment, but you will find that a written risk assessment will help you decide whether you've done everything you need to do. Employers are advised to communicate safety measures regularly to all employees, and this can be done using mobile technology such as WhatsApp, and also the use of posters and other visual aids around the workplace will help reinforce safety messages. Your steps in working safely, you will carry out a COVID-19 risk assessment. You will develop hand washing, cleaning and hygiene procedures. You will maintain two metres social distancing. And where people cannot be two metres apart, you will manage the transmission risk. If you share a workplace with others, you will need to decide how you can manage this and decide what plans need to be agreed and put in place to keep your two metre distance. You want to identify areas and tasks where social distancing is more difficult. And if your work involves tasks where you need to be close to customers or others, you need to identify these and plan your social distancing. Where equipment and vehicles are shared between workers, think about allocating one piece of equipment per person or whether you should do something else to keep people safe. Where there are tasks that need two people and they can't be more than two metres apart, first of all, see can you redesign the task so that only one person is need needed, i.e. using lifting tools. Identify which areas of your work people congregate in, e.g. restrooms, smoking shelters, waiting rooms, meeting rooms. Everyone should approach health and safety and well-being of each other in the workplace with compassion and understanding. This could be limiting the number of people in a work area and if people are going into someone's home for either personal care or to do maintenance, ask those who don't need to be there to wait in another room. Employees are often better placed to put ideas forward of how to resolve concerns and employees have the right to work in an environment free from serious or imminent harm and should not suffer any detriment or dismissal for acting on a reasonable belief of serious danger. This can be achieved through early dialogue and consultation, but when issues cannot be resolved, employees are entitled to raise a grievance. Looking at changing works and tasks to keep your social distancing, you want to change and redesign tasks so that they only need one person to complete them to allow this two metre distance to be maintained. 
use markers on the floor to help people maintain the two metres, and stagger breaks and possibly the start and end times of shifts. Limit the number of people doing tasks at the same time, and if this is not possible, then keep two metres separation and follow hygiene procedures. Where possible, use more than one exit and entry to reduce the number of people coming together and look at virtual ways, i.e. online, to discuss tasks or meet with customers. Have strictly timed appointments and keep to these timings. And during loading and unloading, drivers should either be in their cabs or in a specified waiting area. And where you can, use contactless deliveries so people don't need to get too close. And deactivate any contractor's passes to stop them coming to your workplace unless it is planned. We're going to look at when you're getting your premises ready and if you're in doubt, don't open. Bad reviews and being named and shamed on social media will do more harm to your business. Just think about Sports Direct and the damage that was done to their firm when they tried to stay open at the start of the pandemic. The TLF research has identified three types of post-COVID shoppers. We have the live lifers and those are the people that can't wait to get back to shopping, their social life and just want back life back to normal. You have the appreciate lifers who will look at things differently and look on those who have treated their staff well and waited a wee bit longer before starting to trade more favourably and possibly give them their custom. And then you have the protect lifers and these are people who anticipate long-term lifestyle changes and plan to remain much more cautious. The key themes for this group are long-term maintenance of social distancing, hygiene measures, less, less or no foreign travel, and avoiding anywhere with crowds, such as sporting events, cinema, cafes, shops, and restaurants. And any business that relies on face-to-face -face contact must effectively communicate, communicate how they will change and provide a safe working environment to allow customers to come and visit. As I said before, do not open if you're not ready. Make sure you have appropriate signage and include a sign that would say, if you think we could do something better, please tell us rather than post it on social media. Identify the fear that some people will have and be seen to be making real steps to mitigate this. Ask for customer comments, especially from your regulars. And in some cases, you will have less browsers and more spenders, as people still will be avoid window shopping and being in stores for no reason. There is the potential for new customers, as there are a lot of people still on furlough, some of which are quite cash rich. Think about what offers and discounts you will have in place when you open, as people will not be expecting to pay full price for things that have only a seasonal use, and this especially will apply to fashion. You also want to think, have you anything special for your key workers and your NHS staff? When getting your premises ready, there are some very practical steps. You may need to discuss some of this with traders beside you. Where can people queue safely without blocking a footpath or other businesses? When maintaining a two metre distance and you want to tape these areas to show where people stand. When talking to other traders you want to ensure everyone is working together to maintain customer safety. We have got used to queuing and know where to do it at our local supermarkets but where do you queue in Main Street, Ballyclare, Glengormley or Lantrum? Have a look and see is there any sort of shelter if the weather is not good? Do you have a sign that says one in one out or will you permanently need a member of staff on the door and this will have cost to the business? How does the door open and how often are these touch points cleaned? Can you allow people to exit through a different door? And if not, make sure they're not mingling with people queuing out the front. And make sure you have a table with hand sanitizer and wipes for your customers and a sign to encourage them to use. What you want to do is agree the number of customers who can reasonably follow the two meter distancing within the store and any outdoor selling spaces you have. Take into account the total floor space as well as likely pinch points and very busy areas. You want to tape the floor for people standing at the checkout and the till area and have your perspex screens in place. You want signage that will remind people not to pick up things they're not going to buy, to pay with card rather than cash, to shop as quickly as possible and not loiter, to order online and collect and again ask them can we do better? If so please tell us. When you're getting your premises ready, you want to be thinking about how to keep the workplace clean. So you want to be frequently clean areas and equipment between uses, using your usual cleaning products. You want to frequently clean objects that are touched regularly, include self-service checkouts, trolleys, coffee machines and staff handheld devices. Make sure there's adequate disposal arrangements for all of these cleaning products and cloths and have a plan for clearing workspaces and removal of waste and belongings at the end of each shift. Set out clear guidance for the use of the toilet areas and provide hand drying, drying facilities, either paper towels or electric dryers. 
If you're cleaning after a known or suspected case of COVID-19, then refer to specific guidance as set out by the Northern Ireland Assembly. Within your business, many of you will have fitting rooms and you want to be looking how to manage these properly. Fitting rooms should be closed whenever possible, given the challenges of operating them safely. But if you feel your fitting rooms are essential, they should be cleaned very frequently, especially between each use. Storing items that have been returned, donated, brought in for repair, or just tried on in a container or room separately for 72 hours is probably advisable. And then clean items where possible before redisplaying them back on the shop floor. You want to limit contact between customers and colleagues during the fitting, and for example, suspending any fitting services or having appropriate screens and PPE in place for the staff. When you're handling goods, merchandise for returns, you want to limit the handling of this through different display methods, new signage and rotation of stock. You want to put in place picking up and dropping off collection points where possible rather than passing goods hand to hand. And you want to stagger collection times for customers that are collecting items with a queuing system in place to ensure the two metre distancing. You want to set up no contact return procedures where customers take return goods to a designated area and encourage contactless refunds where possible. Consider placing protective coverings on large items that may require customer testing before use, for example, furniture, beds or seats, and ensure frequent cleaning of these coverings between uses using all of your usual cleaning products. Getting your staff well prepared and keeping them safe. You also be wanting to get your staff prepared and keep them safe. And importantly, you should make sure there is time available for managers and workers to have these conversations. The success of any plans made relies on both managers and workers having an open and honest conversation. You should listen to what's being said to agree action points and solutions together. Don't be scared to make changes or things are not working out as planned. As a general public, we're not at your planning meeting and don't know how they're expected to behave. And we all know how randomly people can act at times. You want to be aware of the importance of mental health at these times of uncertainty. You want to be thinking of simple, clear messaging to explain guidelines using images. Consider people for whom English may not be their first language. Use visual communication, for example, whiteboards and signage to explain changes to production schedules, shift patterns, etc. And this in itself will reduce the need for face to face communication. Communicate any changes to operational procedures with suppliers, visitors and other people who visit your premises to ensure they are also compliant. Promote your well-being support as some of your employees may find it difficult dealing with the general public again. Reduce your employees face to face contact with each other as peaceable people could possibly work back to back. Other steps to consider are as far as possible where workers are split into teams or shift groups, fixing these so that where contact is unavoidable, this happens between the same groups of people. Identify areas where people have to directly pass each other and find ways to remove direct contact, such as by using drop off points and transfer zones. Have ongoing engagement with workers to monitor and understand any unforeseen impacts to changes to working environment. Touch base with them regularly and check how they're getting on. Communicate regularly and clearly with everyone and ensure no one in the workforce is overlooked. If these new ways of working are very different to the previous, then job descriptions and staff contracts may need to be changed. Stagger your break times and re reduce pressure on the tea break in the break rooms. Use outside space for breaks where possible. Create additional space by using other parts of the workplace or building that have maybe been freed, freed up due to remote working. Install screens to protect your staff in reception and similar areas. Provide packaged meals or something similar to avoid fully opening staff canteens and encourage workers to bring their own food. Reconfigure your seating and tables to maintain spacing and reduce face to face interactions. Encourage staff to remain on site where possible, but if not, that they maintain social distancing while off site. Talking about PPE, Public Health England and the Public Health Authority recommend that the best way to reduce any risk of infection is good hygiene and avoiding direct or close contact, which is closer than two metres, with any potentially affected person. Any member of staff who deals with a member of the public behind a full screen will be protected from airborne particles. And the government, current government guidelines states that employers must continue to provide PPE if this is shown as required by the risk assessment. There is currently no evidence 
that they are effective in preventing the spread of the virus outside clinical settings. And employers must review this advice as it is updated regularly by the Northern Ireland Executive. Workplaces should not encourage the precautionary use of extra PPE to protect against COVID-19 outside clinical settings. However, if your risk assessment does show that PPE is required, then you must provide this free of charge to workers who need it, and any PPE provided must fit properly and there must be sufficient stock of it. There are some circumstances when wearing a face covering may be marginally beneficial as a precautionary measure. The evidence suggests that wearing a face covering does not protect you, but it may protect others if you are affected but have not developed the symptoms. A face covering can be very simple and worn in enclosed spaces and it just needs to cover the mouth and nose. By consulting and involving people in these steps, you're taken to manage the risk of coronavirus in your place. You can explain the changes you're planning to work safely. You can ensure changes will work and hear their ideas on how to improve. And you can continue to operate your business safely during the outbreak. You must consult all of your workers on health and safety as this is a two way process, allowing workers to raise concerns and influence decisions on managing health and safety. Larger businesses may consult through the health and safety representative chosen by your workers or selected by the trade union, but you cannot decide who this person will be. You may also decide to repeat the discussions if something changes. For example, new guidelines are published, lockdown procedures change, if plans you put in place don't work as expected, your work or your task change, or someone in the workplace has been diagnosed with coronavirus. Looking at keeping footfall will be slow in the initial weeks of trading, and this is a good opportunity to excel with customer service. Customers will be looking for experiences that they couldn't get in isolation, and this is where excellent customer care and a genuine interest in their well-being will pay off. Making sure that both staff and customers can shop safely is the number one priority when stores reopen. And if a retailer cannot guarantee this, then they will face a huge problem with customer confidence. Use your social media to let people know that you're open for business and when they can visit your premises. Communicate your new trading hours and emphasise that any reduced hours are there to facilitate cleaning procedures. Continue to promote click and collect and highlight that this is out of concern for customer safety. There will be new ongoing protocols and procedures, and this will allow you to introduce staff training and induction, which will allow you to agree the new ways of working, document who has attended the training, and assign responsibilities and actions for both the employees and the employer. Ensure that people understand that this is not a temporary shift, but certainly the way that things will be until the government tells us differently, which could be anything from 12 to 18 months. 18 months. Through training, you will brief your staff on PPE, cleaning communal items such as keyboards, phones, kettles, the practicalities of cleaning the communal areas, staff room, toilets, doors, etc., the cleaning of the touch points, how to deal with customer returns. It will allow you to educate people and inform your customers of changes of opening hours and other previously well established procedures. There will be reminder posters throughout all your premises on doors, windows, staff areas, toilets, and cleaning stations. There will be changes in reporting and communicate any changes in how staff now will report both their sickness and their absence. Highlight how this differs from previous, previous procedures and how it differs from the staff handbook and ensure all your staff understand what is expected from them. There are practical issues as you want to consider everyone who has access to your premises, both staff, customers, delivery drivers, visitors, contractors. You also want to review and update the company insurances where necessary and you want to update your company's health and safety risk assessment. And a copy and a template of this can be downloaded from the health and safety executive free of charge. And this is an example of what it looks like. They have done all the hard work. They have filled in all the, the columns and you just have a read through and adjust it to your own business and action, the who, the when and when it is completed. There is additional support being offered by Newton Abbey Council. And again, you can text business to 80039 if you want support. You can also get free one-to-one -one mentoring through the Optimal program. And there is a range of other webinars on the Andrew and Newton Abbey website under council support. There is information from the Public Health Agency where they will have posters and down for you to download and display and information from the Labour Relations Agency. Finally, as further information becomes available, the Council will communicate this through their website and other media channels. 
There are links to useful information on reopening safely, grants, rent relief, support, etc. And all of this is being updated regularly. Again, if you need business advice, please text business to 80039. And finally, thanks for listening.